Hello, my name is Jasper, and I am a counselor here at Cano, as well as an alumnus at the University of Chicago. Today I'm going to talk about optimizing your educational journey in regards to three universities that I have personally had the success helping students gain admittance to, namely MIT, Cornell, and UChicago. Now, there's certainly no repeatable formula for tailoring your application, and instead I want to use these cases more as an inspiration to find the path best suited for you and to strive towards becoming the best version of yourself. Most of us are aware of the standard application components, right? We know that you should ideally take challenging courses, try to get the best grades possible, do a lot of activities, things like community service to academically related, and of course you want to write good essays. Yet, these ideas are rather vague, and more than that, we're seeing more and more how even students with impressive credentials on paper aren't getting into their top choices. Um, so, instead, we need to first think about what makes U.S. colleges so world-renowned in the first place. You know, it's things like innovation, groundbreaking research, invention, um, and a lot of intangibles related to how they help you develop as a person. One reason for the struggle is that many of these students don't have a strong enough theme or identity in their application. You know, everything from exceptional essays that tell us a unique and compelling story about who you are, to engaging in the right kinds of activities, the things that truly demonstrate what the colleges are looking for. Another reason is that students tend to neglect what makes each university unique. They kind of take a one-size-fits-all approach. And instead, the college application process is simultaneously a process of trying to find the right fit for you, just as it is for the colleges trying to find the right students for them. You know, here, they included some of the common data set information, you know, publicly available. These numbers don't tell the whole story, but, you know, we can see right off the bat there's really low acceptance rates. But another thing I want to pull our attention to is the relative size that, you know, Cornell's student body, even though it is still considered a small um, private school, is double the size of that of Chicago, which is double the size of that of MIT. So, what I want to talk about as well is, you know, specific college cultures, what kind of makes them unique, what values they look for, and how they also tailor their uh, student bodies to have, you know, again, the kinds of students that they're looking for that reflect these values, as well as fostering a diverse community. All of these are really important, and from common data set alone, we can get at least a glimpse into this. But let's dive a little bit deeper. This is why we want to take talk about, and this is why we take the applied sideways approach. So this was an idea delineated by an MIT alumnus. His name is Chris Peterson. He wrote this kind of viral article about this back in the day. And it's a pretty simple and universal concept. It places the emphasis not on the end goal, but instead personal development, you know, becoming the best version of self of yourself and the kind of person that belongs in these top tier universities. You know, so things like academic excellence, um, curiosity, things like that, as well as being kind, you know, genuinely doing community service and trying to help people and the kind of student who's gonna go to these schools and contribute to their community. Um, and of course passion and just being more unique. So, um, rather than just, yeah, again, focusing on kind of the, the cold, hard data and things like that, we want to dig into these values and get a little bit more personal. And one thing I like to note as well is that we see these values reflected in the school models themselves. It's sort of hiding in plain sight, but these things, you know, the schools tell us straight up what they're kind of looking for and the kinds of students that they like. Um, you know, things like being able to take academics um, and knowledge and things like that and apply that to real life, um, as, as well as, you know, just high levels of intellectual engagement and, you know, fostering diversity. These things are all reflected in these three different models. Okay, so that's, let's dive a little bit deeper into each. First, we're looking at MIT. It's a rather unique case. Um, MIT has its own application system, and yeah, they place more of an emphasis on things like 
academic rigor and competitiveness and kind of like elite level um, programs and activities that really show how you're kind of uh, separate from the rest of the, the applicants, right? So, you know, with this, we specifically had a lot of experience and, you know, there's a lot of cases where students that have gone to what we consider like top tier summer programs. You know, of course, there's a lot of different summer programs out there. Almost every college kind of has them um, in varying capacities, a lot of outside organizations as well. Um, but there are some that are just so kind of esteemed and renowned because they typically train you in, um, especially in the STEM fields, things that are related to doing or directly related in um, college level research. You know, a lot of successful MIT students, they've worked with professors intimately and they participated in um, actual published research studies. So, you know, that's something that very clearly MIT is looking for. Again, thinking about the school itself, what makes MIT, you know, arguably one of the best in the world in its field is that they do publish so much research and they are like at the forefront of really doing groundbreaking work. So the kinds of students that they want are the ones who have either already done so or can clearly show they have the potential for that. Um, another thing is to be academically competitive, but not just through coursework, you know, they, MIT again, at being at the top, they really are looking for those who are competitive at a national or international level. So for example, our students who um, did AMC, American Math Competition, a lot of students do this, but um, getting to the highest level, so passing Amy to get into Osako, that's the kind of student that they're looking for here. Um, and on top of that, also just having like meaningful work experience is really valuable here. So a lot of students do do internships and things like that, but it's most of the time at the high school level, you know, you're not really doing a lot of work that um, teaches you a lot of different skills or really helps you develop as a person. A lot of times it's like clerical work and it's just sort of showing, okay, you have like the work ethic and the discipline and things like that. But for the top tier, they are looking for people who've actually engaged in um, meaningful work and actually contributed to the companies that they've worked for in significant ways. Moving on now to Cornell, um, again, I want to reiterate that, you know, these principles are widely applicable. You know, obviously someone who's qualified for MIT will likely be qualified for other colleges, but I want to use each to get, again, highlight how unique they are and to highlight a different theme that we should be considering um, during this journey. So for Cornell, I want to focus on well-roundedness. Now, this is kind of a tricky idea, or it's easily misunderstood. You know, the idea is not to have a super long like, laundry list of all these activities you did your feet in, you know. We don't want shallow engagement. But instead, we do want to have something that makes you unique, and showing that you approach everything you do with the same level of passion and intellectual rigor. Um, so, here, we like to call this having like a theme in your application, but more than that, having a multifaceted theme. Something, again, that will kind of set you apart and show the colleges who you really are, what makes you unique, what kind of like lights your fire. So here, um, you know, my past Cornell student, his main thing was economics, right? Pretty common major, a lot of students are interested in this field, and of course he had a lot of things that demonstrated this interest, demonstrated his proficiency in economics knowledge and competitions and things like that. But what really set him apart was combining this interest with his passion for music as well, which you know most students kind of consider just a hobby, maybe it's not that important for college. But he was able to combine these things through studies, as well as having a community service project that was basically a high impact fundraising initiative that was able to um, deliver international disaster relief. You know, he was able to fundraise you know, quite a sizable sum of money. Um, but again, not just about the money, this project showed his passion and just like that he really cared about what he was doing and he was able to incorporate different parts of his life into this, you know. It wasn't your everyday just kind of like doing a beach cleanup or picking up trash or you know helping communities in ways that other people could. Um, he's doing it in a way that was very specific to him um, and again being able to utilize different parts of himself, his, his academic passions and things like that all combining into something that is just 
really meaningful and really impressive to the colleges. Uh, so finally, now we have U Chicago. Uh, so finally, now we have U Chicago, um, and what we like to call the life of the mind. So the idea here is I've used this buzzword passion a lot, but it's something that should be deeply rooted and extends to all aspects of your life. And it's a sort of curiosity that can't be sated. You know, one way I like to put it, just a very common quote here. Um, the idea is that it's not about what you do for a living or what you can do. Instead, it's what you can't live without doing. Um, and yeah, again, taking the perspective of the colleges, it's a very important point that you know, these top tier universities aren't looking for students who just want to get, you know, a fancy degree and get a good job, graduate and move on kind of thing. They really are looking for the kinds of students who will make a difference in the world, who will strive to do something new or have a positive impact. And again, these are the, the alumni who make these colleges so great, who kind of like, you know, put them in the top tier because their graduates go on and do these really meaningful things in the world. So we need to be able to show that we're headed in that direction or at least have the potential for that, right? To, to really have our passion show through our applications, not just in activities and things like that, but in the stories that we tell about ourselves. So UChicago is pretty infamous for its supplemental essays. Um, each year they crowdsource them from students and then they're always very like unique, creative, they force you to think outside of the box, um, they kind of require you to draw from maybe various disciplines of knowledge or just they want to see your creativity, right? They want to see you, you for who you really are and not just, again, this, the same sorts of like resume, academic credentials, things like that. Um, an important point here as well is that creativity for them is a really big signifier of success, you know, not just in like the arts or humanities, but in all fields that, again, if you're a creative person and you're doing uh, like a STEM field, likely you'll also be the kind of person who will have, you know, that next kind of new idea that will change our way of thinking or maybe lead to groundbreaking research or something like that. Uh, so, of course, on one level, good writing skills is something that top tier universities look for for all students, being able to clearly and effectively communicate your ideas. Again, even in fields like um, STEM, it's immensely crucial to be able to communicate and to be able to convey your ideas and to basically convince people, whether it's for funding or that just that your ideas are good or allowing people to understand, right? So essays, I think, are increasingly important in college admissions and um, again, being able to approach them in the ways where we have to think about how, um, as we saw in the common data sets, these admissions officers are reading thousands and thousands of these essays. And so, how do you really grab their attention, maintain it, kind of propel them forward in the momentum of, you know, really falling into your story and following your journey alongside you as you tell it. And then finally, being able to demonstrate value. Um, these, all these things we talked about, being able to show them that, yes, I am the kind of student who, when I arrive on your campus, uh, I will engage in the community. I'll try to make it a better place. I'll make a lot of friends and join activities and do all these things that make your college community really great, as well as demonstrating the value that um, you have the potential to do something great beyond graduating, beyond just getting you know, a degree and a paycheck or something like that. So yeah, those are the things I wanted to talk about today. Thank you very much for listening.